Hey folks, welcome once again. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the starter deck for the Tagari. I've been playing a lot of Tagari uh, since I started playing the game, and I'm feeling quite confident about giving out a starter deck for them. Uh, I definitely want to be doing more of these starter decks, so I'll look at trying to do an Afas and Norder deck afterwards. Uh, currently, I don't have the Arachnids though, so we'll look at trying to do that a little bit later. Uh, for now, we'll just jump straight into making the deck. And uh, as I say, I've made a new account so that we can look at uh, seeing exactly what the cards are that you have right at the beginning and just running through them that way. Uh, and I've also made an actual starter deck that we'll go through afterwards, but let's take a look at what we've got available from, from each of the tabs first before we go into anything. So first things first, We've got access to Tapisa. Tapisa is a 614. Uh, and she has a protective ability where she protects the back. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this card, but I think as a starter, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, I'll show you the other hero and then we can I can explain why, uh, why I think Tapisa is really good as well here. Uh, so Asaki is 15-6-2-2, quite a low defense on Asaki. He, his ability is dashing, strike, or, or shoot and dash. That's fine. This is a really good ability. But he has a fellowship of plus one defense if you have Bera, Sanu, and Natala in the deck. And you don't start with this card. So that and factor, factoring in what the Guardian is that you, you're going to have at the start of the game when you first get your starter set. We're not going to choose Asaki as our uh, as our hero, although I do think that he's a perfectly viable hero once you have the right deck built for him. Instead, we are going to be playing with Tapisa. So just to quickly explain why, we'll switch over to the Guardians. We've got access to two Guardians here. We've got Tulok, who gives extra time for your turns. As a beginner, it's going to be really good for you to have access to that. But... I don't think that this ability is particularly powerful. I would say that it's much better to learn to play the game with the the less time that you have access to. And if you manage to do that, then you're going to have a better deck overall. Uh, mostly because Tulloch uh, does not have range. He's got a middling stat line. The 10 attack is high for a Guardian, but it's not really going to come into play most of the time. He also has a Fellowship with Mojag. And this is a really nice Fellowship. But Mojag normally only has three defense. Uh, so bringing up to five defense isn't a big deal. The other problem is that you literally don't start with this card in your starting deck. So it doesn't uh, the, the Fellowship is going to do absolutely nothing for you here. So my advice would be that instead we're going to pick up uh, we're going to choose Panu. Panu has got 12 attack, seven defense, and is a ranged guardian, so it's going to have a bit more utility on the field. And more importantly for this deck. We've got Hermetic Specialist, which is given a Hermeticist plus one, uh, plus one defense. Going back into here, the Pisa is a Hermeticist, so we're actually going to have a 615 stat line here. Whereas Asaki doesn't actually gain any benefit from the Guardian. So we're going to focus on that uh, to Pisa here, and that's going to be our, our main pickup. We'll start with Masters, because it's a real easy pick here, mostly because you... Literally have no choice whatsoever. You must have three masters in your deck. So you're going to be picking up Kaelic. You're going to have Kelly. And you're going to have uh, Miko. Because they're the only ones that you own. Going through them quickly. Miko has. Uh, sort of not that great stat line. Although this four is going to turn into a five. Because of the Panu buff. From our guardian. And he does have an ability that as the game goes on. He's going to get tougher. It's. Kind of better to have this guy brought out later in the game, I personally feel. Although I was talking to another player and he was of the impression that he would have him out on the field at the start, mostly to help out with this attack value. But I sort of find more value in this guy later on. So I personally, I don't take him in the starting five. Uh, Kelly, Master of Styles, so we don't lose any of the attack when it comes to melee. As you normally would with a marksman. But 8332, really nice stat line here. Extremely fast card, very deadly. We're not going to have this in our starting five either, but I'll get to the starting five later. 
but she's a really good card. Uh, this master is used in basically every Tagari deck because she's so good. So, yep, brilliant that you get access to this on a beginner deck. So, fantastic. Kalik. Kalik's another one that I use in my uh, my more developed decks, or some of my more developed Tagari decks. Uh, 10 5 2 one stat line is really nice attack, not so good on the defense. Very average on the movement and range here. But he does have access to Raider, uh, and it's based on armor. So he's going to get a bigger armor defense as he kills things. So he will get tougher as the game goes on. Uh, this is a really good card. As I say, I use this in a lot of my uh, my more developed Tagari decks. So you really can't go wrong with this guy as well. Going down into the Pioneers, you've got a few choices here. Although there are some cards that I just don't think really perform particularly well. Uh, so going through them, we'll start on the last page here. Nera. Nera is 4622. Has a bequest ability, so when they die, it will give a buff to all marksmen that are attached to them that aren't troops. It's a fine ability, but I think that more often than not, you're not going to get an awful lot of mileage out of this in a starting deck. Mostly because we don't have an awful lot of marksmen that we can actually give the buff to. There's basically two cards if you take them, which is Karak and Lakota. The, the stats that they have are all right, but it takes quite a lot of positioning to get Nera uh, to to be able to work along with them. So I'm not a big fan of taking Nera early. Uh, Mingan, six three two one. He is what I would like, what I like to call the baby brother of Kalik, who is that master with the ten attack. Also has the fanatic arm, uh, the armor fanatic ability. So really nice to have. Uh, to be killing off some troops or some, killing off some units with this guy. Uh, not one that I would tend to take at the beginning. The stat line's a bit lackluster for it. But I think that he's uh, a decent enough card. I don't think uh, that you can really go wrong with this. Uh, Minomi. Very middling stat line. Although this is going, this 5 defense is going to become a 6. Thanks to the Panu. So 5, 6, 2, 1 here. No ability on them. Just a really solid card to have. We've got access to Moun. Moun is one of the one of only two one movement Tagari, and has a decent attack and a decent defense, but really does not perform particularly well as a starter deck. The main reason that you would take Moun is that there's a particularly good card that you can get later on called Lapu. Lapu and the Moun in the same deck is going to give you a bonus fellowship. So that's going to uh, turn Moun into a 6-9. Uh, that is much more enticing at that point. But since you don't have Lapu in the start deck, it really there's no there's no real reason to be picking up Moun. He's just, he, although his stat line is quite nice, you're probably better having something like uh, Hinto in the deck instead, which is which is going to mean a bit more to you. We'll keep going through these and I'll, I'll talk about the actual picks for the deck later. So let's see, Maka, 6322. So remember, this is a Hermeticist, so a 6422. Ability is particularly good on Maka. When your morale in the game drops uh, below 20, or 220, or 210 or below, then you're going to get plus 2 attack each time. That's going to take us up to 10 attack. Great, fantastic. The defense is somewhat weak, but is a real glass cannon. And with the, the ranged ability, it's really quite useful to have. So a really nice starting card. Lakota, 5422. Stat line is okay at best. Does have double strike though. The double strike is uh, double damage to isolated targets. Uh, situationally, can be okay. Quite difficult to set up a lot of the time. Bear in mind with this that you're only going to get the double strike on the ranged part of the attacks. So if you attack in melee, you're not going to get this. Uh, quite important that. It does have a fellowship with Maza Sanu, but we don't start with these, so that's largely irrelevant. Next, we've got Karak. Karak Sanu. It's just no no ability on this character. Just a straight five five two two stat line. Decent enough. Possibly makes the deck. Uh, not much more to say about that one, really. Hinto, four seven two one. Again, no ability. So it's fairly quick just to say 
this card is one of the most tanky Tagari cards. So it does uh, do quite nicely in most decks. It uh, does mean that it takes a little bit to, to punch through people, so that's quite quite a nice card to have. And lastly, for our Pioneers, we've got access to uh, Ateno. Ateno has a somewhat lackluster stat line again, 5 4 2 1. It does have Troop Slayer with double damage, though. So doing double damage to any troops that they hit, bringing us up to 10 attack. Decent enough. Generally, I've moved away from using this card. I tried to use it a lot when I first started playing, but I have not found it to be particularly powerful uh, in current ones. Uh, just looking here, we get uh, you need seven of these in your deck. So picking out seven, my advice would probably be one, two. So this is Armor Fanatic. We know me here with the 5-6. I would pick up Karak. Karak has a middling stat line. Good for defense with the ranged. Maka fits into a late game deck nicely anyway because it's such a such a good amount of damage that she can put out. So she's definitely one that I would look to pick up in the in the starting deck. Hinto is a really good one. Just uh, again, one of the most tanky Tagari, so a really nice thing to have. And Lakota, 5-4-2-2, but does have access to that Isolation Strike, which occasionally is useful. So, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that's just 7 Pioneers at that point. Warriors are going to be a bit more, uh, a bit harder for me to uh, to pull out here. Uh, the big thing is that you have to remember that we are using Panu, our Guardian, which I keep talking about. That Hermetis' bonus is going to really start uh, becoming quite powerful when you look at some of the cards that we potentially have access to here. So, when we're first looking at all these warriors, I'll just start from the left here and go right this time. We've got Eeb. Eeb is a 2-4 and has two troops. Both of these you have access to in a starting deck. Bear in mind that they are Hermeticist, so it actually means that their stat line is 2-5-2-1. Five, five defense is really nice. When you double this up, it's going to be a 4-10. 4-10 is a really good tanky card, so quite a useful one to have. Lataha. Now, we only get access to two of these to begin with, but normally you can have three of them. Quite a useful card. It's got range three and a decent amount of movement, so it's quite use it's quite a handy one to have. So, with two of these, you'll end up with a 4-4, four, 2-3 four, stat line. Quite nice. Uh, the range three is really good. A lot of decks don't have range three to begin with, so the Tagari having access to them is really good. It is really nice. Next, Masca, 3 2 2 1. Bear in mind, Hermeticist. So, 3 3 2 1 is the stat line. We have all three of these as well, so we can pick these if we want to. This is really nice for us. Means that it's going to turn into a 9 9 if we choose it. If we manage to get all these stacked together, which is really good. Next, we've got 3 3 2 2 stat line, Marksman. You've got two of these, access to two of these to begin with. This will turn into a 6 6 quite easily. Two, ra uh, two movement, two range. It's quite useful to have. Decent enough card. Kanama. Not a great stat line here, but it'll be a 2-3-2-1 two, two, because of Hermeticist. And we've got a bequest ability, which is buffing up our Hermeticist strength of anyone that dies near her. Which is, but that will not boost up Eeb or Masca because they're troops. So it's only got a few cards that it'll, it'll boost. It's going to be... Potentially Maka or Minomi. It can boost up Miko and it can boost up Tapisa, which can be useful. So, potentially a nice card to have. The three defense here is all right. You don't really take this card for anything other than to block the way and to, and to die and give other, other boosts to, to other guys. So, yeah, decent enough. Next card, Noya. Noya is a 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two because it's a Hermeticist. There are two of these, so it ends up as a 6-6-2-2. Six, six, two, two. The advantage to taking this card over taking uh, Enola would be that, because this is a Marksman and this is a Hermeticist, this can attack at close range and not lose any of its stats here. So really nice card. Uh, Quillau, 4-1-2-2. Two, two. 
you can have three of these right off the bat. We have access to all three of them. It's a card that I found quite poor when I first started playing, but recently in more developed decks, I've uh, found that I actually quite like using them now. They're, uh, they're actually quite handy. They've got a nice fellowship, which you don't have access to when you first start playing. But they synergize quite well into Vihos, which you'll see in the in the troops that we're about to look at. Okay. Four of these together, uh, three of these together, sorry, is a 12-3-2-2. Not great on defense, but does potentially have quite a lot of damage. Next, we have access to only two Sparta. Sparta's a 2-2-3-1. Two, two, three, the three move is a big deal. So uh, Tagari have an awful lot of access to move three in general. Uh, and it's due to stuff like this that can give them the early advantage, potentially, if you can get a decent trade out of this card. A bit hard to do when you've only got the two attack, but occasionally it can be quite useful. Uh, because there's uh, three of these normally, they'd end up as a 6-6-3-1 six, six, if you were to uh, put them together, which is pretty respectable. But remember, we only have access to two of them in a starter deck. Tiva, 5-1-2-2, has double strike. Uh, and the double strike is to isolated targets. Extremely vulnerable. Very pretty difficult to set up uh, an attack with her as a result. But if you can get an isolated strike, that's ten damage. And she's a troop that can also get equipment because she's just a single troop. Uh, sorry, just a single warrior. So okay, not going to say that she's amazing. Not sure if we will end up taking her here. Next card is Viket Sanu. 3-3-2-1. Viquette's ability is that when having this card in your deck, your time gained per turn increases by 5. I used to use this card when I was a beginner just to give me more time. Uh, I've recently started taking it out of decks. I just don't find that it's particularly useful anymore. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. It's Again, it's a, a single warrior, so it can be given equipment, but I don't really think that it's worthwhile generally given this much. So we'll just move on to the next one. Next card, Viho. Viho is pretty much a staple in every Tagari deck. So it's pretty good that you start with two of them. Three attack, one defense, three move, and one range. Just really, really good. The three attack potentially can set up some, some kills straight onto important enemy units at the start of a game, which is nice. And has a fellowship. It's a bit of a weird fellowship. The one that we talked about with uh, Quilau earlier. Getting an extra defense uh, on paper doesn't might not seem that good, only going to two defense, but I've recently found that it's actually incredibly good in certain decks. So, yeah, potentially this is something that you might want to develop in the future. But we're looking at starter decks here. So, I can tell you right now, this card is basically a staple. So, yeah, next one. Last card that we've got access to here is Waban. We have access to all three of them. He has nothing special going on here. He's just a 4 one, two, one Some players really like this card. Personally, I'm not quite so keen on it. I find that he's a bit of a trap into the late game because he has such a low defense that if you end up in a stalemate, players can generally find a good, easy way to kill him with it and get some free points. But he does provide uh, a bit of a standoff to people in the early and mid game since he's got four attack. It's pretty easy to trade him without uh, giving up too much since he's a one star. So, might be your style. So, starter deck wise, I'm going to go into my actual deck this time and we'll go talk about what I've taken here. I've taken, start uh, starting here, Kanama. Kanama is going to have that 2 3. Just really nice to have. We've got some cards that could get buffed up quite nicely by her. She's quite disposable and it's pretty easy to, to find a space for uh, to just sort of dump her and she can die and that does her job. So, that's good. Eeb. He is, is that nice tanky guy. He ends up as the 4 eight, the four ten, So I can't really go wrong with that. Noya is getting buffed up by Panu as well, who's our guardian. So, yep, really good here. Masca, again, getting buffed up. Really can't go wrong with this. It's pretty solid. Viho, as I said, basically a staple in every uh, Tagari deck. Um, just, a, I would always suggest taking the Vihos. Their, their, uh, their trading potential is far outweighs the, the possibility of them maybe dying. Quilau might seem like a wee bit, con uh, a little bit controversial compared to the other card that people like, which is Waban. But I like having the extra range. The, the, the range here is nice. 
they do only do two damage on the trade uh, in melee, but I think that they can normally be enough of a danger to people that they might consider not moving forward with a beginner deck. So I personally prefer Quilau over uh, over the other one. Bataha, I think this is a really good choice into a starter deck. The three range is really nice, and it means that you can potentially open up the open up a play somewhere where you might not be able to otherwise, or possibly stop someone from moving into a position that they might be able to to uh, get right into your line. And that's our warriors. Looking at the last thing here, equipment. Let me just jump out of the deck real quick. We've got access to Bloodstone Amulet, which is a Hermeticist equipment. It means that we can buff up our Hermeticist by one attack. We've got access to Cosmic Whetstone, plus one to a ranged Marksman unit. Plus two defense to a Warrior on this Dados armor. And we've got access to Wuru Skull Gloves, which is plus one attack to a Warrior. In our actual deck, I would advise, even though we're using a lot of Hermeticists, I would actually advise that you pick up the Wuru Skull Gloves because there's an awful lot of uh, melee units that could get a nice little boost from them. The Dados Armor is fantastic on some of our units. Uh, I'm thinking specifically, potentially, onto this guy. It could be nice to make him even tankier. Or possibly putting it onto uh, Mingan. That would give us an extra defense here, which would give him a more rounded stat line and make him survive a bit more, which would then allow him to use his armor fanatic a wee bit more. If you're not starting with Kalik, you could also put it onto him if you manage to draw him and you're not. Uh, so that could be useful for you. Just a really good card, this one in general. And I like having the extra attack because there's a lot of warriors right across the board that you could boost up here. Thinking specifically, again, you could put it onto. Uh, Mingan to again help him start rolling. Potentially if you want to run the cat, you could use it there. There's a few choices across the board. So yeah, most likely I'd be putting it onto Mingan to be honest. He would be the one that would get it in the starting deck for me because I always like to use Kalik in the start and I think that he doesn't really need the plus one attack. Although in some matchups you might find that the 11 is, is useful to have to begin with. So, if we're talking specifically about nice little matchup things, Kelly, really good, because you can give her the plus one equipment to, uh, a plus one ranged equipment to bring her up to nine. That can pretty much kill off most, uh, most units quite quickly, and it's got a range three. So she can apply her pressure all over the place. And uh, there's not really any other unit that I would actually consider using the ranged, uh, the ranged bonus on. Maybe into Lakota. Possibly. But I think really that Kelly is the one that you want to put it on to. Since she has so much uh, assassination potential. And I say assassination not as the assassination ability but as the, the, the ability to basically kill anything that you want it to across the field. The other possibility for putting this equipment on is Karak, but he really doesn't shine in any way. His sort of main advantage is that he can just die in the battlefield and we don't need to worry about him too much. So yeah, equipment-wise, Wuru Skull Gloves, Darod's Armor, Cosmic Whetstone, and that would be us. Big units that we need to watch out for when we're playing this deck. Because we're running quite a lot of Hermeticists, we do need to watch out for the Norder hero Volgar. And the enemy in a starter deck does have access to him. He is immune completely to Hermeticists. So we need to not allow him to get into a position that he can uh, he can just wade in and be completely immune to, to any damage. We have to find ways that we can chip him off. And that is most likely going to be using people like Kelly or using Kalik to get him or using uh, either Lakota, if we can get him into a trap, or uh, Mingan. So yeah, that's... The other options are, because he has 7 defense, we can catch him a little uh, out a little bit, and then possibly use some v -hose along with other units to, to kill him off that way. 
But we have a lot of access to stuff that can take him out in the warrior level and some of the pioneer level as well. So it's all good on it. So looking at starting five now. Starting five. You've got some really good access to some decent cards to begin with. Personally, I'm a big fan of running Kellic in my starting five because he's able to protect it any step any section of the field when he first comes in it makes it very difficult for someone to just choose to dive you if someone does send in small units to try and pick off some of yours then you're able to kill them and get a buff onto Kalik himself so that's really nice to have uh, as well as that i really like in a starter deck running minomi minomi is really good because you've got the five attack and you've got six defense it's just quite a sturdy unit it's not a big deal if you lose her and Yep, she's just, she just works quite well. Lastly, I personally am a big fan of taking the three masker at the beginning. This does mean... This does mean that you've got a 9-9 nine -nine unit sitting on the table right at the start. And you can split that up as you want to. More often than not, in a, if you're playing against other starter decks, you're not going to have someone assassinate this card at the beginning of the game very difficult to get the nine damage together that you need so you can put this uh, you can put this into a, a fairly open position without worrying too much uh, or if you need to and you're concerned that you might be losing to them then you start with this these cards split up so you could run three individual three threes out on the field and then bring them together or uh, if you're going second or if you're going first i would put them all together and then could and then possibly split them up as i wanted to in the first turn Other notable cards that could go into an opening five are Vihos. When I'm running my developed decks, I tend to run two Vihos in a starting lineup. Although that does change when I'm running Panu, just because you've got access to Masca and that's quite nice. Uh, the other options that possibly could have a mention are Latahas. Lataha does have that range three, so it's quite nice having them in an opening uh, an opening setup potentially. Though she does need a bit of setup time. You need to get her up into position. You wouldn't want to run her on the front line, for example, uh, in case she got killed if you were going second. Other possibilities are you may be comfortable running uh, Mingan on an opening as an opening card, much in the same way that Kaelic is there. You've got your armor fanatic, that, and that can get rolling early if someone does some early trade with you. And as I said earlier, there's uh, there's another player I've been chatting to that likes to run uh, Miko at the start. Really nice attack here and a decent defense means that they can be on the field and you can start using their ability quite quickly because as your morale drops, they're going to just get stronger and stronger. So that potentially is quite nice. My, I would suggest not running Kel in a starting lineup, mostly because we've taken this a cosmetic whetstone, which means that we are trying to put this equipment onto one of our ranged people, and she's really the best person to get access to it. So it's mostly from an equipment standpoint that we don't want to do that. There are two other cards that you possibly might want to run in your opening five. You could run two Ebes since they have a, a very high defense. Not a great attack is the downside to them, quite a substantial downside, but you may want to run these guys in an opening lineup just so that you've got quite a tanky unit that you can protect your guardian or or maybe set up some sort of a push with. Noya also potentially is quite good. It does mean that you've got access to one other space in your lineup, possibly if you want to take another large creature or if you want to take maybe Kaelic and Mingan to start with. So I would suggest not taking both since you're probably going to be buffing one or the other of them with equipment and you can't do that with the starting lineup. So possibly you would want to take Noya instead. Maybe you would want Noya and then you could take a Viho or something and you're, you're start to have a bit more aggression early. But you could potentially take uh, Noya instead of maybe Masca. Uh, yeah, it would. But personally, I would stick to the, the lineup that I'd suggested earlier. And that's it. Thank you for watching, folks. If you've got any questions, please put them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear any feedback on this and if you'd like to see more of these starter decks and I'll see you when I'm making more videos in the future. So thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.